In 2008, the Austin Allegro was voted world's worst car. You can imagine how underwhelmed the British press were when the Allegro launched in 1973. Or, can you? Here's one person who will be very surprised if the Allegro fails to be an international success. I could find little to criticize a new dimension in motoring. Right down to the purposeful Cortex steering wheel. The best balanced family car I have yet ridden. It has so many extras it's like a film cast. A smooth and soft ride exceptional for a car a little more than 12 feet long. The most sophisticated car in the world. The Allegro's ride was close to that of the Jaguar XJ6. The 1100 cruises nicely at 70 miles per hour. Even the slowest Allegro cruised comfortably at the maximum speed limit then. They improved upon its predecessor in almost every possible way. High praise indeed. Was this really the, the world's worst car? The Allegro had just been tested by journalists who tested cars week in week out. Perhaps the rave reviews were just a case of wishful thinking. More rigorous scrutiny would have been applied by car magazines. Let's start with Auto Cars Launch Day Review. The Allegro feels lively and eager. The fuel economy was well above anticipation. We found the seats very comfortable. Turning circles are smaller than on the Austin 1300 by over a foot. Under the bonnet, there's much more space to get at the engine. It's a big step forward, in all respects. Herm, I'm determined to find proof, the Austin Allegro was the world's worst car. A month later, Car Magazine gave their verdict. Let's cut to the chase. One of the most disappointing aspects of the Allegro is that few of its buyers will ever come to fully appreciate its suspension. Well, I'm sure not everyone liked it. We averaged 51 and a half miles per gallon, with a best of 54.1, which is a good deal better than expected. You're telling me. And their conclusion was, at long last, a decent car from a British manufacturer. Whatever. One thing that is no lie. The Allegro was slow and noisy, notoriously so, right? We rated the Allegro as the most relaxing at 70 miles per hour. Good wind noise suppression complements the quietness of the engine. But how fast was it? 93.7 miles per hour. The Ford Cortina was 91. Well, presumably, once the long-term tests came out, the Allegro was toast. How did the legendary Allegro 1750 SS fare? I can't remember running a car that holds its tune so well between services. There's never any misfiring and it starts as well at the end of 6,000 miles as it does immediately after a service. Clearly, the British were too proud to admit what the rest of the world could see. I have an idea. Let's ask the French. Game over, I think. In our opinion, the Allegro advantageously replace the previous model. Enough mansplaining. Let's ask a woman. For once, the interior is not black. Is it Feather Christmas? We have to thank for this break with International Morning. It's good for comfort too. The suspension actually suspends the bumps and there is room for leg and elbow. Undoubtedly a reliable model of good pedigree. When they said worst car in the world, maybe they meant the Allegro series too. By 1976, the Allegro would have been well and truly found out. It's easy to drive, comfortable, and generally very practical. It must be regarded as a well-proven car by now. Well, prove that perhaps they meant the Allegro Series 3. In 1980, Motor reviewed the third and final Allegro Series. Most of our testers agreed the Allegro's ride was generally above average. It's possible to cruise quite peacefully at almost 90 miles per hour. The new fascia is attractively styled, but the plastic moldings look cheap and nasty. Okay, so by Series 3 the Allegro was starting to lag behind. And there had always been niggles. Poor gear change on the E-Series. Lack of refinement on the A-Series model and handling issues. Worst of all, poor build quality. A non-functioning trip odometer. A drastically inaccurate tachometer. A fascia molding that fell off. A sticking rear door lock. Cold starting deteriorate. And that's just one review. But, taken in the round, the Allegro was no candidate for world's worst car. And, all the elements the Allegro comprises, good, bad and ugly have given it a fairly unique appeal and a special place in our hearts. Thank you.